Why don't y'all stand up and join us this morning? So good to be in the house. Glad to have pastors back. If you join online, we'll see you live in Pflugerville, Texas. Well, let's just begin to open up our gates this morning. Begin to acknowledge the King of Glory. Come on, He's here this morning. Have you said good morning, Lord? Come on, acknowledge His presence. We welcome the King of Glory in this place. The Lord God Almighty, the one who reigns. We welcome you this morning, Lord. We acknowledge your presence. We give you thanks. Come on, just begin to thank Him. Open up your gate. Get out. 
you're thirsty this morning, he'll quench your thirst. Whatever you need. Whatever you need.
God. Father, we are the hero of God this day to, to say we love you. We praise you, God, for the precious blood of your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for bringing salvation to us. And not because, God, we earned it or deserved it. But because, oh God, you loved us first. We, we pray, oh God, that you today in this Christmas season, would you draw men and women, God, to yourself in the north, the south, the east, and the west. May the testimony, God, of Jesus Christ be heard in every nation around the earth. Strengthen, God, your workers, your laborers, God, and send out more and more of them in this last day. And we praise God you strengthen those that are here this day. As we, oh God, serve this uh, Holy Communion, we do it, Father God, in remembrance of what Jesus Christ has done for us. It's giving thanks and praise for the many benefits that have come by the cross, by the death, the burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We don't take these things for granted. We don't take these things by religion. Take them, God, by the Spirit. And we give praise and thanks to God. You are alive. You're with us. And you are for us. Who can be against us? Thank you, Lord God, for this time together. We see it here as yesterday, so it come to the front of the helpers to serve communion. This is the first Sunday of December. And um, we're going to take this honor, God, at this time to serve the bread and serve the, the juice. Those that are here, you can start to file to the front when these guys are ready from the front to the back. Just go ahead and start uh, get your cup in your hand. It's all together in one or two cups put together. And uh, take it back to your seat. We'll take it together. As a congregation, those that are watching online, you can join us again by trying to just find something to serve for the drink and something for the bread yourself. And uh, the main thing is you're doing this in remembrance of what Jesus Christ has done for you and I. As I was praying about what to share this morning concerning communion, I was thinking to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 through 12. And it says, but we have this treasure in jars of clay. Yeah. To show this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but we're not crushed. Notice that we are not crushed. We're perplexed, but we're not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. We're struck down, but we're not destroyed. We always carry around in us the body, the death of Jesus. So the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, that his life may be revealed in our mortal body. So then death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. As I read this verse yesterday, I was going to these words that says he, we're, we're crushed. We're crushed, we're perplexed, but we're not in despair. The two things that... Uh, wine and bread have in common is they are made the main ingredient was formed in them by being crushed they crush the grapes they crush the wheat they bring forth the flour they bring forth the wine by the crushing and so he says you take this drink you realize you will be crushed but you will not be overwhelmed and not be perplexed you will not find yourself abandoned you're not going to find yourself in despair you're going to find yourself not being destroyed Though you may be crushed. And the very thing that Jesus Christ himself goes through and went through is also things we'll go through ourselves, but with victory. He allowed himself to appear to be defeated, but he was not defeated. He actually fulfilled the prophecy, the scripture that God gave time and time again by the prophets of old. And it took the grace of God for Jesus to go through what he went through without crying out to the angels of heaven and destroying the entire world. And praise God, this uh, Communion Sunday here today on the 3rd of December, we're remembering the precious blood, the precious body of Jesus Christ, broken for us, given to us, that sins might be removed, but also that healing may take place. And healing would be the children's bread. Diseases could be taken and cursed and driven from us. Iniquities of our bloodline could also be broken. God will bring forth also a deliverance of the curse upon this earth upon our governments, upon our land, upon our atmosphere, our economies. Every curse loose upon the earth can be overcome by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ and by the word of God and by the bread of life. So do this today in remembrance of him. Let's take this bread in our hand today. Hold this to God together. Let's give thanks for the precious body of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, this day that the stripes upon the back of Jesus bore our 
sickness and illness and by your stripes we are healed the piercings in your body paid the price of god for the curse upon the earth of a fallen nature of governments and oppressive things around us the bruises on your body by the fists of men by the smitings upon your body before crucifixion took place represent god the iniquities being erased and dealt with from bloodline curses and things oh god that pass through generational curses as well we give praise and thanks oh god this day that this body of christ is still speaking today of health wholeness healing salvation that brings forth to us god a life and brings to us oh god a better return of the supernatural by your spirit father we have thanks and praise for all these things as we take this bread together in jesus name Praise you, God. Even now, Lord, may you heal backs and heal ankles and heal bone maladies, oh God, things that are not right in the bones of people in this place. May arthritis, God, be cursed of the root. And cancers, God, not form. And if any cancer be in this place, we command it to die, to shrivel up and die in Jesus' name. May cysts, oh God, dissolve in tumors. May eye conditions, God, be healed. Father God, may every disease that can be named not come upon our bodies, but, oh God, be broken off of us in the name of Jesus. And may, oh God, a hedge of protection be around your people that quenches every fiery dart of Satan. That we praise you and thank you that you are our victory, our strong and mighty tower. Praise you, God. Now, Lord, with this cup in our hand, we say thank you for the blood of Jesus. This blood represents us being sealed into adoption by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are now called sons and daughters of God. We're now called joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We're now called children and the bride of Christ and children of the King. And we're also called overcomers by the blood of the Lamb. So Father, we have thanks and praise this blood speaks today in 2023 as loud as it did over 2000 years ago on that cross. Thank you, Lord, for sending your son, Jesus. That he shed his blood for us. By that blood, oh God, has been a price paid that we could not pay ourselves. Thank you for salvation. Praise you for cleansing. Thank you, Lord, for the power you've given to us and the Holy Spirit, God, that lives inside of us because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Let's take this together and just give thanks to him. Let's all stand up. We're going to sing. One more song of praise and worship here with our children, dismiss, and our youth as well. They're going to be going upstairs today because they missed out a week or two ago. And so you guys are being dismissed now. We're going to sing one more song of praise and worship to God. And the ushers will get our cups now or later as well in this service.
What a Savior He is. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that we can call you friend. <laughs> Father, that we can call you Father. That, Father, you are our Savior. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for that today, Lord. We thank you that you are the God that sets captives free. That, Lord, you bring deliverance. You bring hope. You bring healing and salvation. And we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for that today. And, Lord, we thank you that you do love us. God, you really do love us. And we thank you for that today. We thank you that you reached down from heaven and touched us. That you called us out of the miry clay. That you set our feet upon a solid rock of your salvation. And we thank you for that today. What a gift, Lord. What a gift. What an honor, Father, to be able to stand and, and worship you in this place today. We thank you. Father, I believe you've started a work in hearts here today. And I pray, God, that you would complete them. Father, that you would work forward and that you would go and do deep, deep, deep things in our hearts, in our lives, and in our spirits, Father, soul, body, and mind, that, Lord, you would go forth. Father, maybe it's a healing that we're believing for. Lord, I declare completeness today in Jesus' name. Complete healing in Jesus' name. Father, we took communion today, reminding us of the covenant, Father, and your covenant is healing, and we thank you for that. We thank you for that, Father. We thank you for the amazing gift of God. You're the great I am. We bless your name today, Father. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. Amen. God's good, isn't he? Yes. He's a good, good Father. He's a good God. You may be seated this morning. Thank you for being here with us. In Ephesians, I wanted to read Ephesians 1.11 this morning. It says, in him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purposes of his will. It's just confirming that God loves us. Amen? Right. He loves us in order that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. And I wanted to remind you that through the union of Christ today, we claim him, his inheritance. We claim what he has said is ours because of him today, because of the word that says in him we are chosen and therefore we have the inheritance of God in our life. Amen. Right. And the inheritance of God, we have been chosen. We have been put into union with God. That's good. Amen. Amen. He has brought union with us, with him. And then he says, we are claimed by God. Before we were even born, he gave us our destiny. Do you believe that? Yes. Do you believe God has a destiny for you? Yes. You know, when we were singing this morning, um, raise a hallelujah in the midst of a mystery. Sometimes our destinies can feel like a mystery right. in our lives. Right. We sometimes don't understand them. They sometimes seem a little wonky in our lives or we think we should be reaching and we haven't. But you know what? We sing a hallelujah anyhow, right? Because he has ordained us. He has ordained before we were even born. He gave us a destiny. I love it. What a comfort. What a thing we can trust in. He other, in other words, he had a plan for you and you are walking out his plan. All right. So I'm encouraging you today to seek out what God's plan is. Right. Say, you may be saying, well, I don't know where I'm at. I don't know what my destiny is. I don't know what my, I've already reached my destiny. Uh-uh. God has a plan for you. And he has a destiny continually for you in your life. Amen. That you would fulfill the plan of God in your life. Fulfill the purpose that he has created for you. And I know destinies have seasons and things go on, but he has a purpose for you. He has a plan for you because of the union that he has brought you into. Amen. And then he says that we would fulfill the plan of God who always accomplishes every purpose and plan in his heart. That gives us hope. Amen. That gives us hope that we can trust him so that because why? Because we need to give him all the glory. 
So he is faithful to his plan. He is faithful to his purpose. He is faithful to the union that he has with us because we are going to give God his glory. Amen? Amen? So I want to encourage you today. Remember that you are in union with Christ. You are one with him. He has claimed you in his inheritance for his inheritance. He has a plan for you, a purpose for you. Right. So that we can give him ultimately, amen, all the glory. Amen. So listen, a lot of it is in your hands. You've got to give it to God and trust him. Because he is faithful to do what he says his word will do. Amen. amen. Who can testify today that God has given you a plan or a desire in your life and he is fulfilling it? Anybody in here? Amen. I can. I know what God has done for me. I know and I trust what he's going to be doing for me. And he is faithful because he called me God for such a time as this. Just right. like you right. sitting out there today. We are called for such a time as this. Amen? Amen. Well, I'm glad you're here with us today. And um, welcome to you and those online. If you're a first time guest with us, welcome. We welcome you. We have a gift for you. Um, after service and we would love to share that with you if you're a first time guest online click the connection button that says get connected and we'd love to know that you are here and that you have been with us today also there's a prayer request spot here any of your information's changed please let us know we're getting a few returned letters and we want to make sure that we have your correct address and info so please fill that out but um, we appreciate that and also your prayer requests Okay, today we wanted to remind you that your stockings were due today. So if they're not here, please make sure you can make a plan to get them here. If not today, make sure you connect with Jack or next uh, Saturday when you meet, bring it here. Um, they're going to be meeting right here at 9.45 next Saturday. And um, they're going to go to the uh, assisted living center together. So if you can be here at 9.45, if you want to be a part of that outreach, I know the more the merrier. Amen. So come and join us. It'll be about an hour and a half, two hours together. So do that and come away. And also there's little ribbons here that are blue. If you have a stocking for a male, make sure you attach that ribbon, correct? Because it's for males and females and we want to make sure they get the right stockings. All right. So I really appreciate these are beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing these and reaching out. What an amazing opportunity. Plus we have blankets. Blankets were donated, we made blankets, and so they are gonna be blessed next Saturday. All right, so see Jack if you have any questions. Also Angel Tree, your gifts were due today. If you don't have them or you're having an issue or a question, um, you can ask Rochelle and Jacob, they would love to fill you in. Um, but thank you for doing that too. There's going to be many blessed children. And next Sunday is our special event here for Christmas. Um, so come join us. And we have invited the Angel Tree families to be here with us. So we are excited about that. And we will give them snacks afterwards. If you want to help with that, see Rochelle. She would love to have some help with snacks. So um, be a part of that if you can. Also, right after service today, the Kids Church kiddos are going to be practicing a little bit right after service for next sunday so if you have a child in kids church please uh, stay for that because kristen has some pizza for you and the kids are going to be singing so uh, they're excited about that and i know it'll be a blessing we also have um, book club this week um, on tuesday night and um, it's our wow book club and it's actually our christmas party we just want to welcome you. If you want to come, ladies, you're welcome. It's an open Christmas party this uh, Tuesday night, and it's going to be at 7 o'clock um, at Audra's uh, home, and we would love to have you. If you have any questions, see me or Audra, and um, they're opening up their home for our book club, and it's always fun. So 7 o'clock this Tuesday, bring your favorite snack, and we can have a good time together. And then also... Um, Mark your calendar for Wednesday, the 13th of December. So that's not this week, but the following week. We're having a Christmas game night here. Okay, is that up there? Yes. yes. And listen, we love games at this church. I don't know about you, but everybody shows up. So you need to show up too. We're going to have hot chocolate and popcorn maybe, but we're going to have a good time. So come join us and um, for game night, bring your favorite game. And uh, it's always been so much fun, and we thought we would do that this year and just have some good fellowship. So come join us, 
bring a friend, bring a neighbor, and let's um, have a good time on the 13th. This Wednesday, there's no service, okay? All right, then uh, family ginger beer, ginger beer, ginger bread. I love ginger beer. In South Africa, ginger beer is a big thing. It's not beer, okay? It's ginger drink, okay? I don't drink beer. But, um, so when I see gingerbread, it sounds like ginger beer. All right, gingerbread. Who likes ginger beer? You like ginger beer? I love ginger beer. Okay, so that is coming up. It's the first time we've done this event. It's on Friday evening, December the 15th. It's a family event. We were at 6 o'clock, and um, it's going to be uh, an experience to experience the Christmas story right here in a very sweet way. And so if you want to come, you can register online or contact Miss Kristen. Let her know you're coming if you can't get online, but they need to know how many people are coming. It's going to be very fun. And I believe there's even a fancy little code here that you can, you can scan on your phone and register. We're getting pretty good here at Techie, okay? So there's lots going on, so please look at your bulletins, mark your calendars. We're excited. This is the real reason is Jesus for the season, amen? And we amen. love celebrating him. So look at your calendars, see what's going on, and come and join us. And we will live to have you. All right, if they want to hand out offering envelopes, that will be great. And we're going to let Pastor come up and do the offering and, and share birthdays with you this morning. So. All right, we hope you all had a good uh, Thanksgiving. All right, look skinny in here. You all look like you lost weight again. So after Thanksgiving comes the gym, amen, for the walking. <laughs> If you have trouble walking, buy a dog. That will help you out a lot. Okay, so uh, Cheryl mentioned there is some uh, birthdays happening. We don't really know about this week. Um, in the Hatley family, the uh, Hatleys are a uh, good example for all you folks that are younger here. I'd like to see all of you folks have as many children as they have. And uh, they have a little girl whose name is Shania. And I think she's turning around nine or so this, this week. And so as I'm praying about Shania, I received a Psalm chapter 71, verse 17. And it says, oh God, you have uh, taught me from my earliest childhood, and I constantly um, give thanks about the wonderful things that you do. And I really just, uh, since I was uh, reading that verse, and God gave me that verse for her, there's going to be a lot of things happening here that's going to, she's going to remember in her youth, her younger years, it's going to help her toward these years to share the love of Jesus with her friends that she's going to be making more and more of this year in the future as well. And then in the, in the uh, Ramon family, is Tracy Ramon here? Oh, nursery. Well, there are uh, some newer folks to our church as well. And so make sure that someone here gets this scripture to her as well for Tracy. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7 says, As apostles of Christ, we certainly had a right to make some demands of you, but instead we were, the, we were like children among you. Um, oh, we were like a mother feeding and caring for her own children. And as I read that verse there, it's like God was saying, that's one thing that uh, Tracy is very, very good at. And so God's going to bless that, the caring of children. Is there things she could um, put her foot down and say, I've got the right for this, that, or the other. But because God's put a caring, nursing heart inside of her, there's going to be things she will neglect that she could actually have demands for. There's going to be a blessing that she just presses right on and does it for God because of that caring, loving, compassionate heart. Somebody, I think, in here today is Ginger Gibson. Right here, Ginger with us. Ginger is one of those folks that's been here longer than I have, longer than Cheryl has as well. We appreciate her faithfulness. She's a, a tremendous uh, wife, amen, and uh, mother, grandmother, and a parent here. So Ecclesiastes chapter 4, Ecclesiastes 4, verse 9 and 10, it says, Two people are better than, uh, than one, for they can take and they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help the person, help the, help the person um, who falls a, along and get them, help them get out of their trouble and out of their problems. And so as I read that verse there, it's like God was telling me that there's going to be people gathering around you that you're facing things in life. You won't, you're going to fail you're fel facing things by yourself as much. You're going to find that people in the body of Christ are going to rally around you and be there to help you out with counsel, with whatever they need to help you out with. Uh, whatever you're facing this year ahead. Amen? Because two are really better than one. And we also want to give a shout out now to folks we know about that have been here, that watch online, a lot, a lot of us as well, named Miriam Alarez having a birthday. Tina Schnell has helped lead worship here at different times, and we appreciate her life. 
And also in our, in our person that's moved over to the East Coast and watches online every week is named Victoria Lucarini. So God bless you, Victoria. You all have great birthdays. And is anybody else having a birthday today in this room or this coming week that I might have missed? Is it actually Linda's? Oh, yesterday was hers. Yes, I missed last week. I'm sorry. I need to pray about you. I know God give me a verse for you for yesterday's birthday as well. Appreciate it. Linda. Anybody over here I might have missed? As far as wedding anniversaries go, this is a wedding anniversary for Jack and Beverly Adams right here on the front row. Let's give them a hand. God bless Jack. And this is what number now for you guys. 48. Number 48. So only two more years of the big one. But today, this is a big one too. Amen. This coming week here. And Jack got surgery this week on his shoulder. He was totally successful. And just keep on praying that all that pain goes away. He gets complete mobility back into his arm once again. Amen. Uh, let me, many folks have received little surgeries here and there in the church this year. And so far, as far as I know, they've all been successful. And I really believe, I really believe in praying. As I saw the things our daughter went through in the hospital for the 45 days she was there. It makes a difference to pray for the right surgeons, the right anesthesiologists, the right nurses, the right medicine. No, uh, not being given too much stuff, because that's what they tend to do sometimes, uh, nor too little. And uh, that all things go smoothly and God heals everything touched by a surgeon's knife in Jesus' name. Amen. So keep on praying for that. And may God keep on healing all you folks who've got long-standing things you've been battling with. Uh, this is still going to be a season, I believe, of your breakthrough. And I believe God's still healing. Don't give up. God is for you. God loves you. And God wants your body whole. Amen. Because healing is still a children's bread even to this day. Um, something else I want to announce here is um, we, I got the book. Finally, the book I've written has been approved by the publishers. So that means it can be printed. And so it's been printed. I've already sold several online without even advertising. Yes, so that's a good deal. It's also available on Kindle. And so Cheryl set all that up for me. Cheryl knows all about the tech stuff and helps me out a whole lot. And so I've ordered 100 books to come to my house. And they may, they may be here by this coming Saturday. Amen. And so I really felt led. I talked to our financial committee folks in the church as well about this, got their permission. Um, we're going to do what's called a, um, a, a Jewish heave offering, what I call a shot in the arm offering. Because, you know, things accumulate over a year like this. We, we, buy, we buy like $1,000 of children's curriculum this month. We have uh, bonuses we want to give out to all the people on staff and volunteers in our church. They all deserve to receive a, a shot in the arm themselves for that. Amen. And there's this thing of expenses taking place for air conditioners and all the cleaning and maintenance and so forth around us. We know what we're going to do is call it a shot in the arm offering next Sunday if these books get here by then. And what, the way it works is I'm going to only charge you folks in the church here what I pay for the books. And that's $5. Now, anything you give above and beyond $5 for the book you get next week goes to this shot in the arm offering. So if you feel led to give $1,000, praise God. That's, that's what you're giving is all going to the shock in the arm offering. Amen. But just trying to pray about this this entire week. And if the books don't get here by next Sunday, it'll be the 17th. But uh, by faith, it'll be here next week on the 10th. You guys will be here prepared to take and sow in that. I see also someone put a book here. This is written by Jack Adams called The Tithe. He's written several books as well. And so he's saying, please promote my book. But um, he's written several books here. He's written several children's books, other books. And we also have a precious lady here who's written a book on the tithe also in our church. And so we're, we'll, we'll, those books will be available also. But in due time, we'll have a whole rack here. We'll just fill these books up with that we're writing. And uh, may God bless that. So I'm really excited, though. I'll, I'll explain more about this book I've written, where it came from, why I wrote it, what's in it a little bit. And then launch into what we're doing for the special. I won't take a lot of time with that also. So... Let's go into the, into the message today. I'm on a brand new series here. Did I forget something? Oh, the offering. Yeah. Let's have you folks come to the front here. Let's pray over the uh, offering. Let's pray for the birthday and uh, anniversary folks as well. And uh, thank you guys for being faithful in giving. Praise God. This uh, church's needs have been met, but we still always have some things that are in surplus to do uh, because we have a big property around us that needs some maintenance and some things done. And you guys have been, have been a blessing for that in the past, but you're going to be so like that also, I think in the future. So let's pray for these birthday folks, first of all. Now, Father, we do thank you and praise you, God, for those we've mentioned today that are having birthdays. And Lindu had a birthday yesterday as well, add her to the list. But they, oh God, be blessed this year coming up. We pray, God, you lead them, guide them, direct them by your spirit. We pray, God, for divine protection and provision for them. We thank you, Lord, for lasting fruit in their lives. And we thank you, oh God, the plan you have for them is being unfolded for them in the days ahead. Bless, oh God, Jack and Beverly. 
in their marriage commitment, God, to each other. May they grow stronger and stronger together in love and commitment. May you, God, use them as a godly example of a godly marriage. And we praise you, God, as you bring forth, God, your peace, grace, and love in them and through them in the year ahead. What is sown, God, today also in this offering, let it be used, O oh God, for your glory. We do speak together right now blessings upon the city of Austin. We thank you, Lord, that our, our city is being blessed. We're being blessed. And as we're being blessed, we choose to bless others by the blessings, God, you give to us, even in surplus. Help us, God, be wise stewards of all that you give us. And we praise you, God, that you're breaking debt off your people. Yes. We have more than enough yes. in Jesus' name. But, oh God, this Christmas season be a time of giving, not just money and presents, but also love, the plan of salvation, counsel, all the gifts you place in us. Let them flow through us because they're called the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Yes. We praise and thank you, God, for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you, ushers, who help us out here. Thank God for all of our volunteers as well in the church. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to be reading in Matthew chapter 1 in a moment. I'm going to read from Matthew chapter 1 and Isaiah chapter 7 primarily uh, in this uh, message today on this brand new series called The Joy of Christmas. And so every message here I'm going to give is going to do something I hope to spark your joy and having joy in this season. Um, God wants this Christmas spirit to be in us, I believe, all year long. I know growing up as a little child, um, I always loved Christmas, not just because of the gifts, because I kind of felt in the atmosphere, people were more happy, more joyful. They were more giving. Uh, they would actually would take it and bless others around them more. They'd drive better. They would just do things. There was more like a compassionate, kind human, it seems like, in the month of December. So that's one thing I like about this month. And I think also all the decorations around and so forth, I really encourage you guys to decorate your yard, your house, and do something there that talks about the birthday of Jesus, right. not just reindeer and Santa Claus only, even though you can include them as well. Uh, maybe one year we're going to get us a statue that has Santa Claus bowing down to Jesus. Right. And that'd be kind of nice, wouldn't it? Right. Something like that. I told my, told my wife I'd love to on Halloween. I want to get eventually a blow up that shows uh, Jesus with his feet on the head of, de of demons <laughs> in the front, front yard. That'd be really nice, wouldn't it, for Halloween. Yeah. But moving on beyond that, as a little bitty boy, I um, moved to Wichita, Kansas at age eight. And so I had not been to a city that big in my life, uh, living on a little farm in northern Missouri. And I remember that song called Silver Bells. It was said city sidewalks, busy sidewalks, dressed in holiday style. In the air, there's a feeling of Christmas and uh, killed children splashing, flashing, whatever it is that they're doing there. And it uh, talks about how there's silver bells this Christmas time in the city. And so I remember having this feeling here when I went to Wichita, they had this really neat um, downtown uh, shopping center called Henry's. You've heard of Henry's? Yeah. Henry's existed in Kansas. It's kind of like Dillard's is today. A little bit more of an up-class type place. And they had a walk bridge going up above the Douglas downtown. But on the second floor, you could walk across this walkway and end up on the second or third floor. And I thought it was so neat to see that. And then when the snow would fall in Kansas, it would just take all the sidewalks and all the streets and fill them full of snow and bring that song to life. And so I remember that feeling there. I'm in, a, I'm in a big city, and I'm seeing city sidewalks, busy sidewalks, dressed in holiday style, and there's actually snow on the ground. And I could not wait to get my little popcorn and things of that nature to celebrate Christmas. So that's just a memory I've had from the past. But things have developed. We're busy, busy, busy nowadays, today, even more so. It seems like that God says, remember again, that Jesus Christ is the reason for this season. So I'm going to talk this morning here about God is with us. God is with us. Matthew chapter 1, verse 22 we we'll start here and go then to the Old Testament after this. And it says, So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord to the prophet, who said, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated, God is with us. The prophet's name was Isaiah. Isaiah prophesied that by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's incredible that we not only have a God who sent his son to die for us, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But he also gave us the Holy Spirit to be our comforter, to be our counselor, and even to be our angel director. You got to realize that the Holy Spirit and God around us, I believe, gives commands to the angels that God's assigning to us that helps us out in so many good ways. How many wrecks do we not have? How many fingers did not get burned? How many of your kids did not get kidnapped? How many bullets did not hit your house? How many jobs did you not lose? 
How many conversations that would bless you came across the ears of the right people at the right time? All these things are God orchestrating good things for you because God loves you. And if God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. So praise God, we don't serve a God who's distant like the God of the, of the Buddhists, the God of the Hindus, the God of the Muslims and so forth. We serve a God who's with us, a God who's in us, a God who listens to us. Right. It's amazing to think that God can do that, but God somehow can do this. Not only is God with us individually, he's also with all the people of the body of Christ all over the world at the same time. They say there's over one billion people on earth today that call themselves Christians. Now, I can't say all those folks are going to go to heaven. That's up to God to say who goes to heaven and who does not. But they associate themselves and identify themselves as Christians. And so what that means is to me, I would guess at least 100 million of them every day are calling out to God in prayer. Now, how can the world get anybody anywhere answer prayers and hear the prayers and dissect the prayers of 100 million people? Well, the fact is, God is not spinning plates in heaven. And going from plate to plate as they wobble and say, oh, this guy's getting sick. Oh, he's got cancer. Oh, oh, car crash, car crash. You know, God's not doing that. God somehow in his omniscience and omnipotent power knows the very number of the hairs of your head. And he gives that because he wants to show us nothing is too hard for me. If I know how many hairs are on your head, I know all about your problems, difficulties, and all the things you're facing upon the earth. Now, you know, God also could have made the thing that the scientists believed years ago was the earth was flat. If God had made the world flat, that means you'd all be on the same time zone all the time. We'd all be awake at the same time. That'd be that many more prayers God has to answer at the same time. So maybe God made the world round so half the world's asleep, giving God a break, while the other half's awake, bombarding the heavens. Amen? That's just being facetious because God can handle 10 billion people or even more if he, if he needs to because God can do all things. But the fact is God in his own power and his might can take care of individuals in a very, very specific, powerful way because God is God. We don't understand that, but we will, we will see that face to face when we come to him in our glorified body and see him in heaven. The Bible says as he is. Amen. Everybody in here is facing some kind of a problem even today. But God has the ability to deal with every single individual problem, problem represented in this room today. No matter what your problem is, no matter how big it is, no matter how small it is, no matter how long lasting it is, God has the ability to meet the need and erase the problem as only he can do. Now what we got to do here from pulpits and by reading the Bible and being plugged into God is We've got to be patient and perseverant and find out sometimes the keys to how do those problems get solved. What's God's answer for this problem? And when does God want to solve that problem? And how does God want to solve it? And we've got to get ourselves out of the way sometimes and put God in our place and say, it's God in us. Let him be God because we're not God. Amen? Amen. That's one truth you've got to know is you are not God. And praise God that we are not God because God makes no mistakes and God is all powerful all the time. At the heart of the Christmas story is the truth that God not only loves us, he also wants to be with us. You know, God's primary uh, heart and passion in his life is to spend time with you and me and get to know us even better. The Bible says in Daniel, those who know their God, they'll be strong and they'll do exploits. Sometimes you think that all that God wants is us to be strong and do exploits. And God says, no, I want you to know me. And once you know me in intimacy, then through that, you'll do strong exploits and do strong and mighty things around you. But the primary thing is, I am a God, Daddy, Abba, Father, God, who wants to talk to you, speak with you, be with you, love you, embrace you, and even help you with your problems on a regular basis. How many can say here today that in 2023, God has at least solved one problem in your life. How many folks here? Most of you. A lot of you guys here, God has solved a problem you're totally unaware of. There's a problem that you would have had that God diverted so it didn't ever happen. It never even took place. Amen. So sometimes you got to thank God for the unseen. You got to thank God for what you don't even know about. To say, Father, I thank you, Lord, for things that did not happen in my life this year that could have happened. Had I been in the wrong place at the wrong time, I could be in the hospital right now or I could be dead right now. Amen. But because of your grace, mercy, and your work in my life, that problem never happened. And I thank God for that. Amen. 
Amen. We serve a very, very good and kind God. Also, you all you're, you're have already won the jackpot by being born in the United States of America. We don't realize how blessed we are in this nation, not because we're so smart and because we, ha we have it all together, but because this nation has been blessed by God. Amen. Anytime God blesses a nation, it becomes like a nation like America has become. And so let us not quit praying for our country. Let's pray our nation goes forward, not backwards, in every way that God wants to go forward. And all the desires of Satan are not going to come to pass Amen. in 2024. Amen. 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 Let's pray God's kingdom come, God's will be done in this nation in 2024, done, as God's will is done in heaven. Because God hears prayer, God answers prayer, the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous of the Elsman. And by the way, this coming Thursday night at 6 o'clock, we meet here for prayer. And so if you want to join us for prayer for one hour, Jesus' question was, could you not tarry one hour? We're going to pray for the prayer requests that come in here by people writing them out on the bulletins. And also things you know about in the church. Folks in the church need prayer. We're going to pray for our nation's government and our city. Whatever God lays in our heart to pray about, we're going to pray about those things as well. Amen. So come and join us if you can this Thursday uh, for that when I think about it. In the time of Isaiah chapter 7, we're going to turn to Isaiah 7 in a while, um, Israel is split into a northern and southern kingdom. The southern kingdom is Judah. The northern kingdom is the rest of all of Israel and their tribes. Now, the sad thing is the northern kingdoms never had a righteous king. Every king they had was evil and served Baal or some kind of a false god. In the southern kingdom of Judah, they had righteous kings off and on. Sometimes they did, sometimes they did not. When they had a righteous king, things went well for Israel. Israel had prosperity, blessings took place, enemies were conquered. And somehow, some way, whenever humans get blessed, they tend to forget God and turn their back on God. I don't need God. I'm blessed. Everything I need, I've got. What do I need God for? You know, God's not just a need meter. God is a God of, a, of relationships. God's a God who wants us with him no matter how good things go in life. And God gives us blessings, not to drown in the gravy of blessings, but to pass that gravy around to others. That they might have some gravy, too, on their plate. Amen? So God's for that, for a surplus, but it's for a good reason uh, to bless others. So it all goes well in the south when they have godly kings. But now, in the time of, of um, Isaiah chapter 7, they got an ungodly king, and his name is Ahaz. So it's written in the time of a king named Ahaz in Judah. I'm going to have on the screen here now, 2 Chronicles chapter 28. We're going to look at verses 1 through 5 here about Ahaz. And it says, Ahaz was 20 years old when he became king. That's dangerous right there. Because um, doctors and people that are actually neurosurgeons tell us the judgment part of your brain is not developed until you're about 28 years old. This guy's 20. He's running a whole country. This guy is not serving God. And it says he reigned... 16 years in Jerusalem, he did not do what was right in the sight of the Lord as his father David had done. For it says he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel. He made molded images for the Baals. He burned incense in the valley of the son of Hinnom. He burned his children in the fire. Not very good. According to the abominations of the nations whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel, and he sacrificed and burned incense on the high places, on the hills, under every green flourishing tree. Therefore, the Lord his God delivered him into the hand of the king of Syria. They defeated him, carried away a great multitude of them as captives, and brought them to Damascus. Then it says he was also delivered into the hands of the king of Israel, who also defeated him with a great slaughter. And so this king Ahaz... In the geography there, you've got to realize there's uh, Judah in the south. Israel's right above that in the north. Then above that is Syria. Then right next to Syria to the right and above is a place called Assyria. Assyria is the superpower of that region. They've got more armies, more people, more power than Syria or Judah or Israel themselves by themselves. So it's a very, very big time of turmoil as well. Ahaz was involved in human sacrifice, it says here. He was also involved in a thing that was called public shrine prostitution and fornication. He would do things right there in front of all of Israel. They'd have, they'd have sex with all the shrine prostitutes in a very, very open manner as part of the worship to Baal in that era, in that time. Also, when it says they had the valley of the son of Hanam, the son of Hanam actually means the valley of drums. 
It was called that because they would beat the drums on both sides of the valley to drown out the wailing and screaming of all the people being killed by human sacrifice. As they screamed and yelled in death, they beat those drums in the valley of Hanan and try to drown the wails and cries out. This guy was very evil, own children being burned in the fire, being given up to Baal for, for the worship here. This guy was really bad news in almost every way you can think about. The only encouragement we can take from this man's life of Ahaz is that regardless of his wickedness, God was still pursuing him and Judah. He shows us no matter how evil somebody becomes in life, God can still pursue them and try and do things to draw them back unto himself. Yes. And that's what God was trying to do for Judah and, a and, and also for Ahab. And why did God do that? Because God had a covenant with Judah through David. And he said, this place will never ever stay an idolatrous, evil nation. I will always woo Judah back to myself, saith the Lord. So praise God that God did that actually through his son later on. Uh, nothing in, also you realize, nothing is based in your life also on what you deserve to get because we deserve to be dead ourselves. We are actually saved by grace through faith, not by works and not by what we deserve. If you're sitting here this morning and you've done a lot of bad things in the past, even the past few months here, don't let Satan beat you over the head by your past mistakes, by what you think you deserve to have in a negative realm. God has forgotten all about that. As far as east is from the west, your sins have been taken from you by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's not what you deserve, because we all deserve, like I said, the death penalty for killing Jesus Christ on the cross. It's what God's love and what God's grace chooses to do for us is what counts. And I'm praying to God this, this Christmas season, we're going to realize that God is for us and God loves us unconditionally, not with strings attached. Amen. Amen. We deserve a whole lot worse than we get. So let's look now at Isaiah chapter 7. Start reading in verse 1. Isaiah 7. It says, Now it came to pass in the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, the king of Judah, that Rezi, the king of Syria, and Pelkah, the, the son of Rem, I think it's something like Remaliah, the king of Israel, went up to Jerusalem to make war against it, but could not prevail against it. And so the king of Israel, the king of Syria, wanted to take it align with, the, with Judah and have all three of these nations come together and attack Assyria and try to take them over. But Judah refused to do this. So because he refused to do that, it says Israel comes against him and Syria comes against him and they start defeating him. And so he does something himself in the flesh that ends up causing trouble in his life. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 7, verse 6. It says, let us go up against Judah and trouble it. Let us make a gap in its wall for ourselves and set up a king over them, the son of Tebel. This is Israel talking to Syria, saying, because they won't align with us, let's go attack them and, and make a gap in their wall. Notice that. Satan's always trying to find a way to put a gap in the armor that God puts around your life. Wow. That's why Ezekiel says, I looked for a man to stand in the gap, but I could not find one. Right, right. So I'm saying we're, we're here, we're called by God to stand in the gap for, for Austin, for Round Rock, for Pflugerville, for Maynard, Taylor, all the cities around us. God has called us to stand in the gap, even for our families and our children and our grandchildren and even ourselves, lest the devil gets a place, a foothold, and a gap is formed that he goes through that gap. And tries to bring destruction to us. Amen. So this is what's happening here. Let's go, let's go to Judah. Attack them and put a gap in their armament there. And their defense. So we might destroy them. What they're trying to do. So Ahaz of Judah decides. I'm going to go to Assyria. And get help from him. These guys are going to gang up on me and attack me. I'll go to their stronger guy Assyria. And I'll get help from him to attack them. And shut them down. This is his own brain doing this kind of thinking. So 2 Chronicles chapter 28, verse 16 and verse 20, if you read that sometime yourself, it says, the king of Assyria came to him, but only caused him trouble, did not do anything to help him out. And so Ahaz goes beyond this and says, well, maybe he wants some money. He opens up the treasuries of Judah and gives him all kinds of gold and silver and money. And even that did not appease the king of Assyria. And he still wanted to attack and destroy Judah himself. 
in the midst of all this turmoil, God sends the prophet Isaiah right in the middle of all this mess and starts helping to straighten things out and bring in God's order once again. That encourages me just to tell you folks today that no matter how big the mess may get, even in our own nation, God has put us here for such a time as this, Amen. to be in the middle of the mess, to speak the word of the Lord and believe that God's will will be done in this city, in our churches, among our people, no matter what mess is around us, no matter who threatens us, God is still greater and God can still work miracles as he wants to do. Amen. Let's write down four things today before I close after that, four take-home points here about what do we do when problems come? What can we learn from Ahaz? What four things was God, would God have us to do? Number one is this. Let's remember you are his child. When problems come, the first thing you should do is have a knee-jerk reaction. I'm going to remember I am a child of God. I don't belong to Satan. I don't belong to myself. I now belong to the, to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords who can do all things for me, he desires. John chapter one, verse 12, it says, but as many as received him, as many, to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. How many of you realize that you will die for your children? You will fight to the dead. You'll lay your own body in front of a flaming uh, fire to save your children's lives. God loves more than that. If God be for us, who can be against us? God loves his children. He calls us his children and God loves us. All of us need to realize that God also loves us more than we can imagine. More than we can imagine. As I was putting this, writing this down here on Friday, the Holy Spirit um, drew me to Mark chapter 2. About the story of the paralytic who had four friends who loved him so much that the house that Christ was in was totally packed full of people. Right. And they could not get their paralytic, paralytic friend to him to be prayed for. So they took and got on the roof of the house and dug a hole in the roof of the house and lowered their friend down right over Jesus' head. But he could not miss them. Right. The Holy Spirit told me, tell the people on Sunday morning, that demonstrates when somebody loves a person that much, it energizes faith in me to love them back. And do miracles in their behalf. You see, many times miracles and healings and so forth don't take place because love is diminished or love is not there. And so God says, I see people full of love like this. I will move mountains in their behalf. And they're going to have friends who will take and do things for them. And I will also match that, says God. I will match that faith and that love. And I'll bring forth walking and function once again to a paralytic's body because their friends love them that much. In that room that Christ was at that day, I'm not sure how many folks got healed that day. But the truth is that man got healed because that man had someone that loved him that much. And God and Jesus Christ saw that love and he reacts to love in a powerful way. Amen. You know, I've also, there's a side note here. I found in my decades of being in ministry and so forth and, and praying for folks and all that kind of thing is you can get all the formulas you want for prayer, which are good to have. It's good to see, um, how to pray, take, take lessons on prayer, so forth and so on. But nothing moves the hand and heart of God more than love does. Amen. You may have the wrong tactics, wrong uh, patterns, and wrong words sometimes. But if you're praying for somebody in love, right. that will move mountains. Yeah. Because God is love. Amen. And when God sees love, God shows up. Right. And God says, you may have, may have all your ducks in a row as far as your doctrine is concerned right this second. But I see the love you've got for this person, and I see your faith, and I'm going to move mountains for you, says God. I'm, I'm believing God for a fresh baptism of love on the body of Christ in this year ahead as well. Amen? Because the Bible says we're, there's going to be so much sin and evil around us in the last days, the hearts of many will grow cold. That will not be me in Jesus' name. My heart shall grow stronger and more fiery and more soft and more supple and more full of love. No matter how much evil abounds around me, I will not succumb to that. In Jesus' precious name, I'm going to grow in love. Amen? Amen? Not in coldness of heart or hardness of heart. Remember again, back in verses 4 and 7, uh, God tells Ahaz, take heed. He says, be quiet. Do not fear. Do not be faint-hearted. 
Their threats shall not stand, nor shall it come to pass. Now here again, we're going to see a thing I told you guys again and again in this church. It's called the law of proximity. When God makes a promise or God points out a problem, you're going to find a few verses next are going to many times give the answer or give you the warning about how to make sure that promise does or does not come to pass. So always look for that. Here's the law of proximity in, the, in these verses. Isaiah 7, verse 9, two verses later, it says this. But if you will not believe, surely you shall not be established. But if you will not believe, you will surely not be established. And the, and the truth is, and the fact is, and the sad fact is, Ahaz would not believe. His heart was cold. His heart was hard. And he said, I don't need your help, God. I don't want your help. I didn't ask for your help. I got my brain. I got my military. I got my own might. So please just kind of leave me alone. So number two is this. The solution is spiritual, not physical. The solution is spiritual, not physical. And again, I want to say here, we need to be praying for the right people to get elected in office next year. We pray for that in advance. But at the same time, don't put all your trust in what man or woman can do to bring revival to our country. I'm not sure that they, they, we need to get the exact right people in office to bring revival to America. There's some things that God wants to do, I believe, to bring revival here. And I do believe God wants the right people put into office. And I do pray about that on a daily basis. But I don't put my trust and my faith in what man can do only for this country. We're facing spiritual powers of darkness. Right. Demons are, are actually taken and they are gathering together in big numbers in this country trying to bring this country down. Amen. They're trying to destroy marriage. They're trying to destroy the family. They're trying to destroy our children. They're trying to destroy the unborn. They're trying to destroy people's habits and so forth and so on. And those things are all attacks of Satan that God wants the church to rise up and make a difference in, first of all, by prayer and by knowing the Lord their God. If my people called by my name humble themselves and they pray and they turn from their evil ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will, will, will heal their land. Amen. Amen. So God's looking to the church to do their part, then God does his part. And praise God, God's got many Christians in America, believers who know God is alive and God works. So Isaiah chapter 7, verse 10 and 11, he goes on and says this. Moreover, the Lord spoke again to Ahaz and said to him, ask for a sign for yourself from the Lord your God. Ask it either in the depths or in the height above. Now, the word depths there actually means in, in, in the Hades itself, in the lowest part of the earth where Hades or Sheol was at. Ask for the sign in Sheol or ask for the sign in the heights above in the heavens. What was God? Why did God say that? God was saying, don't look for signs where men can dwell. Look for a sign where men cannot dwell. Because your problem is not with man. Your problem is in the heavenly realms and in hell itself. It's demons, powers of darkness, rulers around you. That's where your problem's at. And your answer won't come from man. Your answer will come from heaven. So look for a sign to take place, even from heaven. So after it's looking real bad, his enemies are coming around him. Ahaz still goes into the natural realm and will not believe that God will fight for him and does not go God's way. And God keeps on still talking through the prophet Isaiah, trying to woo this man into getting his, his sense, his senses changed and change his mind in repentance. Isaiah prophesies and says to Ahaz, look, these kings you're relying upon are only smoldering pieces of firewood. They're just little stubs of wood that are totally worthless. Their time is spent. Their power is over. They're only a worthless piece of a stub of firewood that's smoking in the flax and fire in a small, smoldering way. They can do you no, no good whatsoever. They're weak. Their power is gone. They're smoldering. They're worthless. You're looking to the wrong source of help. So what he's saying there. Our source of help must come from God and not from man when things are overwhelming to us in life. When we remove God from the equation of fixing our problems, we are left only with what we can do in our own natural strength. And that's a sad place to be. I don't have any answers and solutions right now to bring out a fire revival in this city and in this church, in my own brain, in my own self. 
But I do know a God who has solutions. God has answers to transform lives Amen. by his spirit. One thing God's spirit is speaking to me very strong about is, is that there are thousands of prodigals that at one time darkened the churches of this city and also around the entire nation. That somehow their hearts have gone and been drawn away from God. And back into the realms of darkness, the realm of the world, the realms of just being almost agnostic sometimes. And some have even gone into full-blown atheism. And God is saying, I still know them. And I knew them. And my spirit was on them. And I still want to see them drawn back to me. As a prodigal son or daughter, saith the Lord. And I believe God wants us to start praying for prodigals in this new year. That God will send to them dreams, circumstances, yes, Lord. situations take place supernaturally. The only God could orchestrate that will somehow wake them up in Jesus' name and draw them back to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Because the Bible says, but as I hit the fell on that story back there in the Old Testament, God sets ambushments against prodigal sons and daughters to woo them back unto himself as only God can do. How many of us know that God knows how to set up real good ambushes? God knows the best traps. God has the best tricks. God does the best thing. God wants to draw folks back into himself. Number three is this. When problems come, you must stand firm in your faith. When problems come, you must stand firm in your faith. Verse 9 says that. If you'll not believe, surely you shall not be established. Now the question this morning is this. Where does faith come from? Romans chapter 10 verse 17 says, So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you're not hearing God's word on a regular basis, pray for your ears to get opened up because God's talking. Right. Amen? Right. God's talking through the Bible. He's talking through pulpits like this. Mm -hmm. He's talking on radio waves and airwaves and TV waves. Right. God's talking through nature. God's talking through books. God's talking in so many ways around us, yet do we perceive it? Mm -hmm. Dreams, visions, still small voice. God is talking today, right. Right. yet do we perceive it? I'm praying, God, open our ears to hear your voice because yes. faith comes by hearing. And without yes. faith, we cannot please yes. the Lord. All right. Where does faith come from? Hearing God's word. God is telling Ahaz, there's only one way out of this problem. It's not spiritual. It's physical. You got to hear my voice. And I've sent my voice to you named Isaiah. And you will not listen to what he's saying. Isn't that sad? Here's the most powerful prophet perhaps in the whole, whole entire Old Testament. One of the most powerful ones there is sent to him and he won't listen to him. This, I just can't fathom that. The good news is this. God's word does not return void. Amen. Even though Ahaz rejected the word of God by the prophet, that word went into his soul somehow and came right into his unborn son named Hezekiah. And Hezekiah heeded what Isaiah said. His word will not return void, but it will go forth and accomplish what God wants it to accomplish. God is telling Ahaz that if he will just take and just believe, he'll have tremendous ramifications of blessings take place in his life. But if you won't believe, it affects not just you, Ahaz, it affects the entire nation of Judah and also your family and yourself. You know, I've told those guys that have been here before in the church that whenever I decided we chose to move to Austin, Texas in 1993, I went on a three-day fast leaving Kansas, and I said, God, where do I go? Which place do I go to? And I was praying between Dutch Sheets and Colorado Springs, and I was praying about Austin, Texas. And when I started praying for a three-day fast, in, in 10 minutes, my telephone rang, and it was Bob Nichols here in Austin, Texas calling me up. And tell me why I need to move, move to Austin. And I he began to bear witness to my own spirit as he spoke and talked. And so we found ourselves packing our bags and moving up here January of the next year that took place. Now, if I'd gone and moved to Colorado Springs because of mountains and, and streams and valleys and all the beautiful things of that and trappings that are there. And I, I, want, I love Dutch Sheets so much. I want to be with him. Guess what? Dutch Sheets has moved five times. <laughs> five times since that took place. He's down in South Carolina. He's not there anymore. And guess what? Sarah would never have met uh, Nate. And Kristen would never have met Jeremy. And I don't know what my grandkids would look like. They might not even be married yet. They could be single still. I don't know. You see, we, we actually, our, our obedience, hearing God's voice, has replications not just for us, 
but our families and also future generations. It's very, very heavy. It's not a light thing to hear God's voice. And be tuned in to God's voice because you need to hear God's voice because you're affecting future generations. And you guys would not be here. I would not be here if we not heard God's voice. That was several decades ago. We need to be hearing God's voice. And time and time again, I've seen how God's blessings come when you hear his voice and obey what God says. Amen. Number four, last of all, when problems come, realize God is with you. Isaiah tells Ahaz, ask God for a sign. And Ahaz says back to him, I will not ask for a sign because I don't want God's help. I don't need God's help. I didn't ask for God's help. I don't need a sign from heaven. Leave me alone. And praise God, God's a gentleman. Holy Spirit's a gentleman. He won't force himself on anybody. And so it's okay if you reject my word. God will still send the signs of Isaiah, but it will take place, we see, in the next generation. And so Ahaz suffered a bad death and a bad life and bad circumstances and bad things took place in him. But the good news is that Ahaz has a son who trusted God. He became one of the greatest kings of Judah's history. There was such an anointing, a messianic anointing upon Hezekiah that many messianic prophecies were released during the reign of Hezekiah over Judah. That anointing was on him. It got released there. Open heavens came and God began to bless Judah all over again. Ahaz won't ask for a sign, but God determines a sign will still be given regardless. And that same sign is spoken of in Matthew chapter 2. We read that very, those verses there first. In the first part of this service. Let's close now. I have Greg come back to the front to help me out here. The worship team. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 says this in closing. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And shall call his name Emmanuel. God is with us. Yes. Praise God that God spoke that many years before it took place. Through Isaiah. To a man named Ahaz, to a man named Hezekiah, and praise God, it's now taking place today that God is with us, Emmanuel. That's why we have joy this Christmas season. The account of Ahaz is an account that reveals to us that God is a God who is ever reaching out for us. If somebody can be as evil as Ahaz was, sacrificing his own children in the fire, worshiping Baal, doing public sex with all the prostitutes that are shrine prostitutes and so forth, and still, and still God is reaching out to him and saying, repent and come back to me. I've got a covenant with this nation. God is surely also reaching out to you and those that are watching online as well. Don't let Satan tell you that you don't deserve God's forgiveness. You don't deserve God's blessings. You don't deserve God's favor. You don't deserve God's provision or protection because of all the bad things you've done in your life. God's taken all those things from you. And God wants to bless you. And God wants to help you, not to curse you. Well, heads are bowed and eyes are closed this morning. I'm going to pray for those that are watching online, those that are watching, that are listening today in the, in the sanctuary as well. But I'm going to tell you the God, the God who came the first Christmas is the God who's still here this Christmas. He's still with us. He's still Emmanuel. He's still God with us. And he's still for us, not against us. God's love surrounds us. When problems take place, remind yourself and speak those words. I am his child. My battle is not, is not physical, it is spiritual. I will stand firm in faith and God is with me in this problem. Father, I praise and thank you God today that you are the God who's here among this people in this congregation. All of them here, all of us, have got some kind of a problem in some way, if not in our lives, in our children's lives, our grandchildren's lives, our brothers, our sisters, our friends, our loved ones in our workplace, there's problems around us that we cannot solve in our own power. We need you, O oh God. We need you, Lord, intervene. Lord, Lord God, we say thank you that you are Emmanuel, that you are God who's with us, and God who's in us. God who dwells inside of us. God who also works through us by your spirit. You that are watching online here, the different ask.
Jesus Christ come inside your life or your heart at all as your Lord, your Savior. Please take time today. Find a place by yourself even. And admit that you cannot save yourself. Your good works, your church involvement, your parents' faith cannot save you. You need Jesus Christ yourself. You must be born again. Born of the Spirit. You're only born of the Spirit by asking Jesus Christ to come inside your life. To take sin from you, to be your God, be your Lord, be your Savior. And say, Lord God, I want to follow you now all the days of my life. I give my life to you. I lay my life down for you. As you lay your life down for me. And I say, now God, you be my God. You be my Lord. You be my Savior. Take my sin from me. And I thank you, God, this day. You write my name in the Lamb's book of life. And I shall be with you forever and evermore. But I want to follow you now on this earth. If you pray a prayer like that, please let us know by calling us, writing us, emailing us, texting us. we got a book here by, by Jack Adams about what do you do next now that you're saved to receive Christ. Let's all stand to our feet now, please. Those that are prayer partners, let's have you come to the front now also. If you're a prayer partner, we want to pray today that any problem we're facing in life that has been too big for us, can we just take it as, uh, in a spiritual sense, lay that problem today at the feet of the altar of Jesus Christ and say, God, I admit this problem is too big for me. This sickness, this disease, this lack of money, this depression, this anxiety, this fear, my children's problems, my co-workers' problems, they're too big for me, oh God, to solve. I call upon your name, O oh God, this day, and I say, Lord, intervene by your spirit. Intervene for our nation, God. Intervene for our city. The problems our nation's facing today that are too big for us. We need the divine intervention of God. So, Lord, I pray, we pray, raise up intercessors, raise up prayer warriors, raise up people of faith. Use us, O oh God, to bombard the heavens, to believe you, God, for a breakthrough about our city in Jesus' name. We declare, O oh God, today, the prophecy spoken over Austin shall come to pass. Even years ago, even decades ago, they shall come to pass in Jesus' name. Father, raise up, O oh God, the praise. Raise up the worship. Raise up the apostolic. Bring forth the prophetic. Bring forth the evangelistic. Bring forth, O oh God, the teachers, the pastors, the body of Christ. Bring them up, O oh God. Raise them up. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, also God, energize our soul. We declare today we are not a smoldering wick. We are a fire brand in the hand of God. And we shall be available to be used for your kingdom's advancement. In the name of Jesus. But, O oh God, this day, you see problems, I see problems. We give the problems, God, to you. They're hindering us. They're stifling us. They're weighing on us. They're too big for us. Lord, I pray God take these problems from us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Before uh, we're going to have Greg to give us in a worship song, at the end here, a play worship song. Has God given somebody here uh, any kind of a vision? Prophetic vision? Is there some kind of a, something come to your, your mind, your heart, as a word of knowledge? Everybody further here at all need to bring more. Let's just raise your hand if you like that. Anybody have something like that? Okay. But I'm singing them out. These guys are singing up here. I'm just kind of seeing a, a plane. There's a flat plane that you see in Kansas where the sun has been setting. And I'm seeing the glow of the sun as it goes over the horizon. But God is saying I'm reversing that sunset into a sunrise. You saw and thought the sun set in areas of your life. God's going to turn that around into a sunrise. Amen. He's going to cause your, your life and your problem to go Amen. away and diminish. He's going to bring the light of His presence brighter Amen. and brighter in your life. Amen. God's going to turn the sunset into a sunrise. as only He can do because God is the God of the East and the West. We praise you, God, this day. You take a turn, our sunset into sunrises. That's only you can do. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God.